Hello, hello. Um. <laughs> Do, do, do. Am I on the right way? Yay! Hey, Julie. All right. I'm going to wait for a little bit for everybody to join. Yippee! There's Julie. Yes, I can see you, Julie. Awesome. I'm going to... Let me see. Can you... For some reason, hold on. Ah, invite to join. Okay. All right. Let me do a, a quick introductions first on this IG Live before I invite you, Julie. Um, so after that, what am I saying? So let me just do the introduction first. All right. So uh, everyone, welcome to today's IG Live. My name is Karen Kartika. Uh, this is one of the many live interviews that I'll be doing this month for the, for the, you know, until, until I finish interviewing everyone that I'm interested in interviewing. Um, the folks that I'm interviewing today and, and, almost my, and all of my other uh, IG live will be self-made business women and men who thrive both in their professions or in their own businesses, doing what they love and still out there pursuing what they want. These people are people that I truly admire. Uh, and honestly, these are, you know, just people that have the same traits as you. We're high achiever, we want to experience life more than what, you know, what we have. Um, and there's always no limit to what's next. And if you have been putting your passions or putting your dreams on the side, thinking that it's never going to be mine, it's not the best time to do it, it can never be me. I hope that any of these interviews will inspire you uh, to start taking actions, to really commit to make it happen because we are never guaranteed tomorrow. Today's all we have. So let's bring in Julie right now. Let me invite her on. Hold on. Julie, I just invite you. Can you see it? Hi Yay! there. Yay. Oh my Hi. Gosh. Hi, this is my very first Instagram live. So let's just wait. Okay. Can you hear me okay? okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. Well, welcome to your first Instagram live. <laughs> yes, this is oh, uh, like, how do I get in? What do I do? So. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I saw you email like 15 minutes ago. I'm like, oops, I haven't checked my email. <laughs> How are yeah. you? We haven't we haven't chatted since before you went on your book launch, right? But yes. You booked right before that. Yes. So um, I am, you know, I'm doing pretty well. I'm just like there's just lots to lots to be grateful for, and so yeah, I'm very hot too because it's a very hot day here in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna bitch a little bit about the weather. Yeah. <laughs> 110 where I am right now, which is I'm like, wait, I thought summer is over. How come it's 100 degrees now? What's the temperature like in Seattle? It, I actually don't know, but it's it's hot right now. I actually, I just, I do not, I know it's not 110, so I know it's not 110. So considering yeah. it's Seattle, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never hot. Yeah, Karen, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm doing great, actually. Yeah, and I'm I'm really um I'm really honored and grateful that you say yes to this IG Live interview. Yeah, well, I I've uh, thank you for inviting me and also for being patient with my kind of ignorance on how to go about doing it. So, no problem, no problem. I know you're you're used to be in LinkedIn, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm <laughs> bring her into this thing because I really love the reel that you created. That mm -hmm. was. That was spot on. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this woman is funny too. Yeah, and that I kind of bumbled my way through that one too because people were asking me afterwards, what was your strategy? I was like, I had a strategy? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, okay. So a lot of my um, people that, you know, been watching me or in my circles are um, all these high achiever women and men who have multi-talents and 
some of them are thriving both in their professions or you know whatever the business that they're starting to create on the side but there are a few more bigger percentage who are putting their dream on the side thinking it's never going to be me it's never going to be the right time and you have jumped from academia into newspaper into launching your own you know uh, business and then becoming a writer and a speaker and you seem to continue like whatever is in front of me i'm just gonna grab it because i love doing it so please do share like what what were your paths like like what really um what really made you say yes to like what really come to your mind like did you like i guess it's that silly question like do you have a strategy or it's more <laughs> like oh my god this is exciting i'm just gonna take a you know yeah so okay, again let me um, I'll share a little bit about just like those those different pivots because I know that your um, your audience are just hey what's my what's my next change what's my yeah. what's that next transformation yeah. and so for me I actually spent uh, I spent most of my twenties getting my PhD in history so I went straight from undergrad to grad. Uh, and, and I was just like, I'm going to be a professor. That's what I'm going to do. And I did all the right things to be an academic. Mm -hmm. Um, I managed an academic journal. I, I got to teach up, um, at my alma mater. I, um, you know, I published in peer review, uh, journals. And then towards the end, I remember it was, I was finishing in my dissertation and I was living in Hanoi at the time. And I, I kind of just, and it was 2008 and I kind of just looked inside and I was like, I, I don't think... I don't think this is what I want to do. Mm. And I mean, I had just made an investment. I mean, this is, I was about to turn 30. This is like, I just spent all of my twenties doing this. And my, um, my family has a Vietnamese language newspaper. They were uh, the longest running Vietnamese language newspaper in um, uh, Seattle. It's privately owned. And my brother was asking me to come back to Seattle mm. to help out. And, and I kind of, I, I looked, this is that I was like, I looked inside I looked down, I was like, this is not what I wanted. It's not what I want to do. Mm. And I did not want to go into academia. Oh. Did not want to go into academia. And so, and I, and I realized like, I actually want to go into business. And um, here my, my brother was asking me like, hey, can you help out with the newspaper? And, and I was just like, you know what? I think this is the time. I mean, I did apply for one more postdoc. Um, and I didn't get it, which is not surprising because it's like 2008 recession, every, <laughs> everything was getting <laughs> slashed. Right. Yeah. And, um, but it was actually a really big, I mean, I remember feeling that she's like, this is, I don't want to stay in academia. Mm. Um, and, and also feeling that this is the thing that I've trained for, like for so long, like, yeah. isn't it a waste? And I ask, I hear people ask that all yeah. the time. Like, isn't it a waste? But I studied this, I did this. And so, <clears throat> so, um, so instead, I decided to come back to Seattle, and that was 2008. It was the start of the recession, mm. the worldwide recession, mm -hmm. and the start of the decline of the newspaper industry. And here I am working at a paper newspaper, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, and newspapers are shutting down across the country. Yeah. So, so how did that make you feel? Like, you're... I, I'm, I'm so sure scared. So scared. Guilt of like, oh my god! I've just spent the last twenty years of my life investing in this. Now I'm coming into this that it's like, I don't even know if there's a future to this. So oh yeah, no, I was so scared. I mean, and it was there was because I didn't know. I mean, aside from my parents and the community that we serve, like I didn't. None of my friends were entrepreneurs. Mm. None. I mean, all of like they all had. They were in academia because I was leaving. You know, that that was my network. They're in mm -hmm. academia. Um, or they're in corporate jobs. And, um, and here I was entering the family business um, yeah. in a, the beginning of a declining industry. And I was super, um, I mean, my first thing was just like, I just have to work hard. So that was my, like, I just got to work hard. And it took me probably seven months to realize it's not about working hard. It's about working smart. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I would just go into the office and, um, and, and, you know, part of another reason why I wanted to work at the newspaper was for personal reasons, because I was just, most people don't get to know their, spend time with their parents as adults. Yes. And I really just, I was like, if I spend time with my family in this family business, I will never regret that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. So I think that first really big one was leaving academia. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I do remember, um, 
getting ready to fly back for my graduation um, uh, for, from, from my PhD, right? I was going to go back to England. And my mom said to me, I don't know why you got a PhD if you were just going to come back to Seattle and do this. Mm. And it was like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was <laughs> asking myself that too, right? <laughs> like, right. And I'm just like barely making any money. And, um, and, and yet I was just, I kind of then, just like, this is going to be my real life MBA. Mm. And I'm going to learn a lot from this. Mm. And I did. And I think like that was, cause sometimes it's like, you have to think what's the first, um, I mean, you can make it a series of like small, like a series of small changes, or you can like do a really big change. And that's kind of just up to you and what, what the situation yeah. um, is. And so for me, it was a very big change of going from being trained to be an academic to going into business. And, and then from there, I stayed at the newspaper for three years and I learned so much. And then I started and I was doing tons of volunteering and networking and I got what I call my real life MBA, mm -hmm. which is also, I mean, something for people to think about is like, how do I learn? Sometimes I think sometimes people think if I go back to school, it'll, it'll give me the answer. Yeah. And, and I, um, and I had actually even considered getting, should I go back and get my MBA? My dad was like, you are too old. And I was just like, I just spent most of my 20s in school. I'm not going back to school. And I'm going to learn how to do this by doing it. <laughs> right. And so, you know, and so I just, and so it's just like, no, I'm going to learn how to, I'm going to learn all the things that I need to learn um, in business by just running a distressed business during a recession. <laughs> like, There's not even a case in the NBA <laughs> of stress business. Okay? Right. It's and like not. a niche ethnic business. Right. And, um, and I did that for three years and then I, and then I actually networked my way in and I got into, um, Microsoft. And so I went from, you know, like I, I describe it as I worked with eight people, half of whom had the same last name as me. <laughs> right. And I need to go to their org and that I, that I like work at this tech company that's got over a hundred thousand people. And, um, and then I spent the next nine years in tech, like then going to another small, then going to a small tech company, um, where I remember meeting the CEO and cause I was, I, my contract wasn't renewed at Microsoft mm -hmm. meeting the CEO and of the small tech company. And we were just having a chat and the next day he's like, I, um, I need a marketing manager. I know you don't know anything about this. I'll teach you everything I know. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you're really smart and you'd be fun to work with. What do you think? And so that's what I did. And I was there for um, about like a year and a half, another, you know, and then like, and then uh, I joined um, a nonprofit, which I never thought I would join a nonprofit. Wow. I never thought I would join a nonprofit because I really love entrepreneurship and I never thought I would do that. And, and yet I got to be in a very entrepreneurial position there. And so I was there for six years. It was the best job I ever had. It was a, a wonderful place. Um, and then in the middle of the pandemic, I decided to, um, I kind of looked inside. I think every change has been like looking inside and it's like, is this it? Is this it? You know, that's the question. Like, because the thing that drives me is a fear of complacency, uh, like fear of like, is, is this, it's not actually like so much about like, it's not about achievement. It's like, what am I, am I going to still be learning? Um, so I, that's learning is actually a huge motivator for me. Is that one of your value then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. So I have so many questions, mm -hmm. but I'm going to start first. Um, I like the, the, I like the way that you're positioning that sometimes, you know, just to, when you want to learn something, not necessarily you, you have to go to school, like you can learn by doing, mm -hmm. you've proven it in, you know, your, uh, your, your, your MBA at your, mm -hmm. your, your uh, family's uh, newspaper. And then from that, like, Okay, so what gives you the confidence? Because you, especially like you're going to the tech world, right? Um, and then startups, like they all want so-and-so like MBA from blah, 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 or um, like you've worked, you know, before with this type of companies and stuff like that. And sometimes that's what kind of like hold people back because they feel like, oh, will I be good enough to, to like go, for, go bigger? not necessarily you open your own business, but like just go bigger with your professions, right? Go towards something like you went from a family business to a Microsoft, to a tech company, another uh, startup tech company, right? And then to a nonprofit. And you, 
you're 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 just like hey i know what i need to do here you better hire me so what give you that kind of like mm, to 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 just go for it well i would say it's not necessarily i know what to do but i know how to learn it mm. <laughs> right so yeah. i was pretty confident in my ability to learn things um so i mean even just uh, as a as a researcher so much of that is just like what am i it's very um i mean there there are certain methodologies but there's also things that you can like i can only learn by doing and so when i was at the um newspaper i mean low risk right it's my family business they're not going to fire me <laughs> right and so they um, try yeah right <laughs> So, you know, it doesn't keep, come cheaper than like free. Right. So, <laughs> right. so, um, so I think that it's, it's, so the thinking about what are the ways that you can learn? Cause I like, again, like kind of doing that real life MBA was, I mean, I would look for opportunities to volunteer skilled volunteering because you know what? People are going to fire volunteers True. unless you do something you know, unethical, right? <laughs> so, so I think it's actually a really great way to experiment. So I ended up joining boards and learning how to do marketing and stuff. So, and, you know, you were asking about like the confidence gap, right? So it was just, it was like, well, I think that there's actually power in not like, I don't know what I don't know. Mm. I don't know what I don't know. And so I kind of just go into it and just like, well, I will, I mean, I remember actually learning how to sell. So, and selling, I mean, I remember I'd get on these calls with ad agencies and they'd use all these acronyms and ask me all these questions and I didn't know how to answer. And, I, and once I, I hung up with a big ad agency in LA and I just kind of crawled into under the desk. I was like, that was really bad. <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And it's clearly they're just thinking like, but this is the managing editor. And, <laughs> and I said to myself, Julie, you are not good at this right now, mm. but you will be good in two years and you just have to do it. And that's, I mean, that's what I just, it's because so much of it just takes practice. Mm. And I think that, I mean, actually, if anything, I mean, I draw a lot of inspiration from my parents. I just think about they, we came to the U S as boat people. I was a two month old baby. They started this newspaper. They very, you know, limited English they kind of just made their way. And I think I developed a deeper appreciation for that when I moved to Vietnam, mm -hmm. um, when I was uh, between my master's and my PhD and learning because I studied Vietnamese as an adult. Mm -hmm. And just wow. like the, and I just kind of had to mess up. I mean, the only way people learn a language is the mm -hmm. risk it takes of just like having, engaging in conversations. And so from that, I, I think that was also big of just like, I just got to get in there yeah. and just keep talking and guessing what they mean <laughs> until <laughs> I can understand and I can participate. Oh my God. Um, and so, um, and so I think that that confidence was from, uh, was, you know, just watching my parents and then, and also just, um, and also just realizing that the only way, the best way to learn is actually through doing. doing. And I will, I will say, Oh, I hear from people. Oh, should I go back to school? And I say, do you want a degree? Because having a degree, getting a degree is different from learning. There are many different ways to learn. And hopefully you don't have to pay for that way because school's gotten a lot more expensive too. So unless it's important for you to have a degree, which it might be if you want to get, if you want to really progress in the, uh, in the corporate world, it, it could be really important to have an MBA. But if it's not, then find other, uh, find other ways to, to learn it. Wow. Wow. So what would your message be for those who are like, um, me included sometimes like I hate sales I don't think I can be this and here you are you're researchers and you're doing sales <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah right like I mean it's not it is not easy it's not like I it's 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 um it's uh I would it's something it's just like I just it's it's with um opportunity comes responsibility with opportunity comes responsibility. And I actually think like at the end of the day, everything comes down to sales, right? Yeah. So people can be really successful um, in business and never gone for any degree or formal training if they've learned how to sell. Yes. Um, and, you know, watching my parents, how to, I mean, one of the things I learned coming back and working at the newspaper was, uh, wow, they're, English was pretty limited. I didn't re realize that growing up because we only spoke in English. 
mm-hmm. then as an adult and I, that I spoke Vietnamese fluently, it's like, oh, actually their English is pretty limited. And yet they communicated with all of these American advertisers. We had like the big corporations were advertising in the newspaper. So what are those different ways to communicate? Mm. Um, so I think that is, uh, and, and also it kind of gets back to just, if I'm not hearing, um, if I'm not hearing no's that I'm probably not asking enough. Um, and that email cost includes like with the cost too, right? If I'm not, if I, no one ever says no to my price, that means I'm charging too low, <laughs> right? So I actually have to hear some no's. Like if I'm not hearing some no's, then there's actually probably something wrong. I like that. I like that. Wow. All right. So what gave you the idea next then to start your own business? Yeah, you know, I... I realized that I wanted to, I wanted to own my work. Mm. I wanted to own my work, right? Because uh, I, I was doing a lot of writing. I was like, you know what? I want this writing to be mine. Mm. I want, I want my name to be on it. And I can't do that as an employee. That's true. Right? <laughs> so someone else is going to own your work if you're an employee. Yeah. Right? And so I, I think part of that is um, coming from my academic background where it's just like academics are just like, this is the work I put out in the world and it's mine. Right? And I realized like if I, if I needed to, um, if I was going to do that, then I had to take the risk. And so um, I remember, I remember uh, just a few months before I was, I left my, my, the best job I ever had. Right. And I, um, it, to leave, to start my own company and someone had a friend asked me, Hey, what does success look like? And even though I'd been asked that question so many times, this time I really struggled. Mm. And, and I realized it's like, huh, why am I struggling this time? And I remember trying to pull out some, something from my mission statement or something. Yeah. And yeah. And then I realized, you know, we don't ask the question, what does success feel like? We always ask, what does it look like? You know, how do we measure it? What are the outcomes? And yet we don't ask what it feels like. And so in that, I was just like, it feels like freedom. Mm. I need freedom. And so, um, and so I actually ended up later on developing this into a framework. So the question, so I I like to compare the question of what does success look like to what does it feel like? And then when we ask the question, what does it look like? The follow up question is, what do you need to do to get there? Right? Like people are just, well, what do you need to do? What are the activities? Yeah. Yeah. And so in asking the question of what does success feel like? I think we should ask, what do I need to stop doing? What's preventing me from feeling that? So we can compare a to-do list and a to-don't list. Right. Like what are the things I should be doing? What are the things, what are, and what are the things to stop doing? And so in that, I said, if I want to feel freedom, you know what I need to stop doing? Asking permission. Asking permission. I was constantly in a place where I had to ask permission. Right. And so, and then we talked about, I said, with opportunity comes responsibility. Right. And so, to take that risk, it's like I've got to do things that that that's that goes along with I'm taking I'm taking risks, right? I'm responsible for that. Yeah. So yeah. And, and I will say, remember telling my dad, it was a uh, hey, I'm gonna leave my mm-hmm. great job in the middle of a pandemic, my great executive job in the middle of a pandemic. And I really thought he would be um I, I thought he would be really worried for me. Uh-huh. And you know, he said, I'm so happy for you. Wow. He said, I'm so happy for you because now you will have freedom. And in the U.S., people can always lose their jobs. Yes. But you will now never lose your job because, you know, I create my own job. And I realized that even though I was afraid of what he was going to say, it totally makes sense because he and my, he and my mom started their own business. They left. Uh, he, he was an engineer before and he left the firm so he could start a newspaper. Wow. Yeah being settled in a job and taking a risk. And mm-hmm. the funny thing, I, I like the way that you're, you're, you're positioning the freedom of owning your own job. Mm-hmm. Right? That is, it's never going to leave you because it's your own. Mm-hmm. Not in, nobody's going to fire you unless you fire yourself, of course. But it's like you, you, you put in the hours, you put in the investment, and it's, it's always going to be yours. Nobody mm-hmm. else is yours. Such a freedom. I like that. I like I like that that reframe or you know that the way that you create that uh, what you know the 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 
Well, it is a reframe, right? Like, yeah. It's business it's a, people are just like, oh, is it going to be make profit? Is it going to give you that achievement that you'll look like, oh, yeah, now you are a business owner. But it's, it's actually more than that. It's actually more than that. And I think, I mean, I think a lot about why my parents came to the country. Right. I mean, it was to escape communism. This is for freedom. So there's so many that is, it plays such a strong part in my life. And then and even just even when I wrote my book and I decided to self publish it. And part of that was because I wanted the freedom to choose how I was going to do that book. I mean, even though I'm trained as a historian and I know how to do lots and lots of footnotes that I've done. I don't know so many footnotes in my life. I actually intentionally only have two footnotes in this book and they're both going to the same source because it was like you know I don't have to prove I know how to do a footnote right <laughs> like I yeah. I actually and so even that like the for me that freedom of not of, of basically setting my own terms was a, a very big theme because in that actually there's um there's a lot of uh energy that we to spend thinking about things and and one of the things once I started my own company one of the big surprises was like oh I there's a lot of email I don't have to write <laughs> right <laughs> like how much time I had spent writing emails to kind of just like managing up and sideways and down within a company <laughs> right and just like and um and and also just yeah I just there's and the, the setting, like, what is, how do, how do I want this to look with my team? You know, how do I, how do I want this to look versus is how are other people going to feel about it? And it's just, it's um, when at the end of my first year of business, I actually ended up writing this essay because uh, I was like, what did I learn the first year of business? And um, my biggest learning was I learned how to manage my energy, not my time. Oh, I like that. Because when I was an employee, I was like, let me do all these activities to show like all the work that I'm doing and how I'm bringing value to the company, right? And I have all of these meetings and it's like, look at all the things that I'm doing. And now, I mean, I still have a lot of meetings, but I also make sure how am I managing my, um, I mean, the reason why I started this was so that I could write, you know, so I could have the freedom to write and the freedom to own that. And so, and that's a really important part of, that's something that I have to save energy for, um, and so, and so managing my energy of like, is this, am I doing activities that give me energy that take away energy or is there some things that maybe take away energy now, but that give energy later on, like writing is kind of like that for me. Um, and, and so I, I can project manage, but I don't want to, and it <laughs> sucks. Like it sucks so much energy away. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then, so then that means like, okay, well, I need to. I need to hire someone who's going to do that because otherwise I will do that. And then it's going to take away the energy that, that actually I need to put into writing and to creating. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Um, that is very true though. Like, because, um, yeah, one of the freedom that I got from owning my own business, I don't really have to sit in in meetings that I hate. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because that taxes my energy more than actually, you know, anything else. Because yes. the minute that I leave that meeting, I'm like, I need a nap. <laughs> right, right. And because, like, I mean, that's another. But like, there are so many bad meetings. Oh my god, people just love putting meetings for some reason. Like every status update, every little things, every little movement. I'm like, really. Why do we have emails to begin with? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm, yes, meeting overload um, and then having the freedom to decide, hey, this is where I want to put my energy and also kind of blocking it. It's just like, hey, like, for example, for me, I know I work best in the morning, so I spend a lot of the, my creative, I try to do anything that involves being creative in the morning and um, not, you know, I'm not going to do email, <laughs> like, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's not the best use of my brain power. Mm -hmm. there, there you go. So what, one of the questions is I sometimes wonder is like, like you, you mentioned like, oh, you know, now that I own this business, I can create um, how I want my business to look like, feel mm -hmm. like, right? Um, but then a lot of people who are starting up, 
um, me included, we are so kind of like, okay, this is a new thing. Although, as, you know, as much of maybe some business background that we have and, you know, been in uh, business again for other people or other corporation, but the minute I have to step into my own, it's like, ah, trying to adopt somebody else's, you know, um, templates, metrics, uh, ways of doing things. Because we also have been embedded with the conditionings that if you want to move your things fast, you want to get your success fast, then the easiest way to do it is just follow somebody else's step. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? That cookie cutters or like that formula is the templates that we often been given to just like, and then of course, then we spend a lot of courses and mentorships and all of that, which are all, of, you know, some of them are great. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Some of them actually got me to the place where I need to be. But you are just kind of like, I, you know, this is me. This is how I'm going to create it. Like, tell me like what, what gives you that freedom to just like, I'm just going to explore this and I'm going to take it the way that I want it. Well, I mean, so I, I don't want you to give you the impression that it's just like, I'm just going to like invent all of the stuff. So, no, I mean, there are, you know, best practices out there. And so I, I'm a big fan of uh, there are resources like SCORE is a uh, nonprofit that provides uh, experienced retired business executives who volunteer their time. And I love my SCORE mentor. He's amazing. <laughs> and he's given, done so many tutorials on QuickBooks and taxes for me. So, I mean, and so basically I, I'm very much like what resources are available and I will go and do that. And, um, and then at the same time, it's just like looking at like, is this model working and, um, and how, can, and how do I make it work for me? So I'll give you an example of when I ran my Indiegogo campaign for my book and, um, cause it was like, okay, let's, let's fund this. Um, I want to uh, self fund this, this book. Right. And so my team and I, we looked at all of the Indiegogo campaigns for nonfiction books and we're, we did an analysis. We're like, okay. And then, you know, their best practices of what to do and what not to do. And then we looked at it and we're like, well, how do we do this? You know, like, how does this make, how does it work for us? Because I didn't just copy like what everyone wanted, but at the same time I used it as a base for learning. Right. So I don't want to say like, I didn't look at it at all. Cause it was like, Oh, this is good. This is good. But this is not. And so one of the things that we did, for example, a lot of the campaigns, they always start at like 25 or $30 or $50 and it's for the price of the book. And what I read was, Oh, Indiegogo likes um, a lot of contributors in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So let's do a $5 pledge. Let's start at that level. It's a $5 perk. Right. No, they don't get anything except a thank you email from me. And so that was something that we created because we looked at like what, you know, the research and we're just, so it was something different. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that there's, there are times to use existing um, uh, models and templates. And then there are times to create your own and you have to really, I have to ask, I ask myself like, does this work for our resources and our timing? Is this overkill? Mm -hmm. um, and so like, for me and my team, we're constantly, hey, what are we going to learn from this? Like, it's not going to be perfect. Let's just agree. This is not going to be perfect. Yeah. But what are we going to um, learn, uh, learn from this? Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. That give me an, an, another question. How much of your decision making based on strategic plan, um, you know, good plan or thinking, how much of it is a percentage some you know of that decision making come of like i think this you know you're either you're taking a chance or you intuitively or like something just kind of like no but i need to go that direction kind of thing oh i mean i think probably at this stage of the business is probably more of the latter than the former mm. so we like, i think we're like very opportunistic yeah so it's like and it's a lot of it is actually listening to the customer Nice. So, I mean, so that's the thing. It's like, I can't predict what the cost, if, if I were doing that first, like here's the formal strategy, then, um, you know, this is what they say, but actually what we do is like, Oh, customers seem to like this, yeah. you know, or like, um, so let's try this. So yeah. even, I mean, um, I mean, my very first service, uh, starting my business was a, was what does success look like? And what does it feel like? And so we created these workshops where it was like for individuals at first, and then we were able to later 
uh, revise it for companies and for teams, right? And so it was very much, okay, well, what are we learning? And then how do we, what's the opportunity here? Uh, we, I ended up creating a digital course much earlier than we thought we would. Like, like I've been, oh, you got to start this. You got to do a digital course. And, um, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be like three years from now. And we actually created it at the end of our first year. Wow. And it's not, I mean, Karen, it is not, it is not doing well. <laughs> I know. But you know what? We're learning from it. And that's okay. Because yeah. I think sometimes it's also, you just got to start. Like, I just have to, like, once the sooner we start, the sooner the learning starts. Yes. So, um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's a mix of looking at what the opportunities are and also seeing what's my tolerance for investing um, mm-hmm. in that. Um, and, yeah, and, and, like, I mean, I can look at other digital course creators and it's like, okay, I know this formula works. We just need to figure out how to get it to work for us. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. I have different you know, my own spills on digital career because, yeah, I mean, like sometimes people make, I mean, a few people that I know turn around something, make it, you know, made a digital course and just took off. But I also know there are people like some of, you know, some of my friends as well uh, had a great idea, but somewhere, somehow, there's something that's still not clicking, especially to the, uh, the, 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 the consumers. So we have to learn. And I think that's also lead me to the next questions. Like, how do you handle, like, things not working out? I mean, we, we do have a lot of that, especially when we're starting our business, right? Um, yeah. Um, you know, between things are not working out, uh, things don't turn out the way that we expected, or we just get plain rejections. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Lots of that. Those, lots of those. Because, um, <laughs> again, if, you're not, if I'm not hearing enough notes, that means I'm not asking enough, right? So I have to hear those rejections. Sure. Um, so setbacks are, I, I look at them and it's just like, okay, this was to first acknowledge like, oh, this kind of sucked, right? Like this is disappointing to just like own those feelings and then, and to, then to go, okay, well, what am I learning from this? I mean, I know that with our first digital course, it was three, we, we did a pilot for three months and we were very much like, what are we going to, what are we going to learn from this? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's the, and then how do we change that? So I think that's, that's the lens that I put it through, that nothing is wasted. Yes. yes. I think that sometimes people get fixated on what – it's always interesting, do you get motivated by what you could win or do you get motivated by what you're going to lose? And some people are motivated by what they'll win and some people are motivated by what they'll lose, and which what they stand you- to lose. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very much like motivated by what um, I'm going to win because I know that there's going to be loss along the way. Like I just accept that, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So what, you know, what gives you that, um, that sense of like, because you said it beautifully, like, you know, just feel the feelings and, you know, see what the loss is and just take, you know, acknowledge it that, yeah, it sucks. And then see the learning. Some people, for some people, it'll take a long time <laughs> to be able to get there, right? What was, like, what are, what helped you? Like, what are your tips? Oh, I mean, I'll tell you, last week I did a, I, I, I had kind of taken a break from doing my profit and loss reporting. <laughs> and then, and I hadn't done it in, in, like, I don't know, three, like, four months probably. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Oh yeah. crap. And, and that was, you know, going through the feelings of like, I can't believe, oh my gosh, what? And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in investment mode. Okay. But I didn't know I was like that much investment mode. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, so like, I like to process with other people. I shared with my team, you know, and I also said like, Hey, I don't want you to be alarmed. This is what's happening. Things aren't going to change. This is going to change for us. Yeah. And, um, and then I, I also called in some, I remember one friend was like, I just need a pep talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually really helped me because he was just, oh, um, you know, P&L, cash flow. Like my friend had to sell his car three times to make, <laughs> to make payroll. I'm like, oh, okay, that's good. I mean, I don't have a car to sell, but like, it's good to know that like I'm not at that point where I'd have to, you know, so it could be worse. And, yeah. and I think what I... I think sharing 
the setbacks has been really helpful because then it's just like, oh, I'm not alone in this. Because I think that was the initial feeling. I felt like, oh my gosh, how did I not? Yeah. How, how did I not do this? Like check this earlier. I mean, I've been yeah. I've been really good at checking. Like, how did I just like stop? Yeah. And he, um, and my friend just pointed out, look, we. Um, we all have so many things to do and there are going to be some things that fall. And, and so, and like, and so, you know, my big learning from this is like, all right, I've got to be like super religious, rigorous about this. So, and then, yeah, taking that as a lesson. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think part of this journey for me is in, in business. Some people call it spiritual journey, spiritual journey for me. It's like, it's actually put me back into being a human. Because I feel like when I was just working for somebody else, it's like everything's so determined. I could just close my eyes, everything goes. But with, with, with the business, is like not just like owning the part of me that there are the great stuff, but there are also things that I need to improve, right? Mm -hmm. um, as well as just, you know, the connections that I get from other people and seeing like we all go through the same things, up and down, uh, you know, good, bad, crazy, not crazy, and just give me a sense of like, okay, I'm still human, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and I like I always think of entrepreneurship as really the essence of human creativity because it really it requires. I may have an amazing idea. I think it's amazing. <laughs> But my customers and potential customers don't. And so I have to, I have to like, I have to actually have listen to other people yes. and, and adapt. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, there's so much of that um, adaptation that has to, like, I have to, I have to be willing to, to also ask for help. That's another really big thing. Asking for help. I mean, I cannot, I, I would not have been able to get to where I am in the business if I didn't ask for people to help me make introductions. And then this kind of goes back to the sell too, right? Like I have to sell and I also have to ask people to help me sell, right? Yeah. And um, and I mean, even just like like me, I'm sending out emails like, hey, know any word of mouth is really important. Yeah. Um, do you know any referrals or introductions? And I have to be willing to admit that I need it too. Oh, that's a big one. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that sometimes is still one of the toughest one that I have. I'm like, ooh, what do people will see, you know, see or think of me if I'm asking for help? Do they all think that I'm actually struggling? Well, uh, to be honest, there are part that I am struggling. Yeah. With asking for help. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I just tell, now I kind of do it. It's like trying to, you know, uh, I'm asking for help. I hope, sometimes I'll say like, you know, I hope you don't mind I'm asking for referrals and uh, it's because I'm a small business owner and I've got payroll to make. Yes. That's, and then I put a smiley face. Exactly. <laughs> so, smiley face always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got payroll. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, actually, something I found is that a lot of people are willing to help because I find that some people are kind of living vicariously through me. Wow. And what I mean by that is because it does take a lot of risk. Exactly. Right. It does take a lot of risk. And so I have, I'm so fortunate and grateful that I have a lot of people who are cheering me on. Nice. And, and part of that is just because like, yes, like we, it's the, like, if you, you know, like you doing this is kind of just like, I wish I could leave my corporate job. <laughs> so, but in the meantime, let me support you in the ways that I can. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And I think that's also another important thing that I've learned is just bringing people along my journey like sharing with them, hey, these are the highs and these are the lows. It's, um, I mean, the, the the Instagram reel video that you saw was just like a, the lows of book signing. So it's just bringing people along. And um, yeah, because there are many parts of this, many times where it's, it's, it's really, really hard. Yes, yes. And it, I think it's also a way to, for us to acknowledge the, the hard part not to sugarcoat that everything is just like all great uh, because it's not, it's not true. I mean, life, no matter how great you see it on Instagram or any other social media, there's some part of it that you've never seen on, on a person, right? The struggle that they have to go through in the middle of the night that we would not be able to know unless that person is sharing it. And I feel that as well, especially in, in, you know, in our own business, 
And I'm seeing that the way that people connect more is when you actually open up to mm -hmm. who you are. And that gives them permissions to feel like, oh, you're not just another business because mm -hmm. there's, there's you in it. There's your essence in it, not, you know, not just a matter of the next time that I see you, you're just going to sell me something kind of way. So um, I have to learn that as well because especially being Asian, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, it's hard to put, you know, to, to be open. Um, I, uh, you know, I was born and raised in Asia, so there are a lot of putting up faces, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, not to show like, oh, you're struggling because then you're draw in to people like pitying you, which, you know, that's a big no-no if, you know, in the, in, in the Asian culture. So, but then I realized that the real connections that I got throughout my business are the people who've seen my journey, who are actually invested in me as well, because they also want to see me succeed. But I will not be able to get that support unless I share myself. I don't know if that's something that. Absolutely. I mean, I just wrote a post on low cost, simple low cost <laughs> vacation tips. <laughs> It's like I, you know, I like I'm I'm not I'm not doing much traveling nowadays. You know, I'm, yeah. like I, everything's going back into the business. So I'm doing adult sleepovers and asking <laughs> friends to pick me up at base bus stations. You know, and and it's a uh, and people are willing to like, you know, and I think that's part of the I'm asking people for help, yeah. and they get to be part of the journey. And um and it's it's it's. It is, there's definitely pride. It's like, ah, oh, but here we go. Um, and I, I find that a lot of people actually appreciate me sharing and reaching out and um, asking to sleep over. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually enjoying you having me. <laughs> yeah, and we actually get the time and, yeah, um, right? together. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to get my, my best friends who are watching this. If you're watching this, you promise to come in November. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're we're almost at the, uh, the top of the hours, and um, I'm gonna scroll a little bit and see if anyone have any questions. We have here Julie, Tony, Diva, hey Dottie, Teresa, Frank. Frank said, "I really like this dialogue. Thank you, Frank, for listening." Thank Linda, you, Frank. Uh, Michaela Culverson, uh, and. I don't know how to say the Spire Health and Wellness and CXY. If any of you have any questions, you can type in in the comment and we'll definitely answer it for you. One last question for me. Um, what keeps you motivated? Oh, definitely my team. Definitely my team. I, um, I knew from the beginning that I would not do this alone, even though that meant I would be going into investment to do that. <laughs> and I think that they keep me inspired and accountable too, because I feel very much, wow, they've made this decision to be on this journey with me um, and that we're doing this together. And, um, and you know, it helps me because it's like, well, I have a deadline to them, which means in that deadline, if I, if I owe like, oh, I need to write this email or I need to do something. It's just like, and, that, and then that is actually for the whole of the org, mm. right? And then, and, you know, and then there's the larger of having impact in the world. I mean, I really do dream that one day people will talk about, ask each other, um, what are your forms of respect, the way that we talk about love languages, right? Yeah. So there's also the impact of just the, the work that we're doing, transforming how people, um, the relationships and communication at work. Um, I think, though, most directly, though, it's about my, it's about the team. That's what keeps me every day just feeling inspired. That's wonderful. Well, for those who are watching this today and the recording later, what will be, what is one thing that you want to share? Or maybe, you know, things that you're doing with your business that you, you want people to come and join your movement or, you know, whatever it is that you have going. Oh, um, I get, please check out curiositybase.com um, and formsofrespect.com. And I, I think that I just, I want people to, to, to practice curiosity, to, um, to, uh, to just communicate better, to like, just there's, 
yes, please follow all the socials and all of that stuff. Um, uh, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'll, I'll end with that. Okay. That was not a very good job selling, but I'll end with that. (laughs) I put you on the spot. So I'll, I'll just send me a text with all, you know, the information and I include that in the, uh, post description. And I'm also going to send you, um, I guess a download of this uh, video. Hopefully, mm-hmm. technology is on my site, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you know, feel free to also post it wherever you want it. Um, to oh, and get, to... get the book. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, get the book. If yeah. I'm not rem- like you, also have that questionnaires on your website. Yes, you can go to um, formsofrespect.com and do a free quiz and find out what are the what are the forms of respect that you prioritize. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Julian said, I appreciate the nothing is wasted part, a good reminder. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yes, nothing is wasted. All the <laughs> things that we learn, whether it's good, bad, learning, all, you know, all give us, um, all put who we are today and mm-hmm. we see who we are next. So nothing got wasted. All right, wonderful. Um, one curious question. Mm-hmm. What's next for Julie? What's next is to keep, uh, keep doing the work. I mean, we're just, we're just really excited about the, about the, the essays, the classes and just, and I just keep doing the work because one day we know it's like, okay, this is going to pop. So like, we just have to, that's, it's just being in it. Yeah. 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 For those of you watching, uh, Julie is very active in sharing a lot of her thoughts on Substack and LinkedIn. Uh, and I definitely will put that link in the description as well. All righty. Karen, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me here. I really love and really truly enjoy our conversation today. Thank you. Got, like, My cool first Instagram video. live. <laughs> I know. I thought I'd actually do this with you so that yeah. you can actually do this Instagram live for the first time. And yeah. So many more to come. <laughs> thank you. All right. I will see you and speak to you and you know soon. Hopefully will not be as long as this one last one. <laughs> I know we're all busy in our schedule, but it's always nice catching up with you. Thank you yes. so much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take care.